let's take the case of Grayfy. All right, Grayfy. I think Grayfy is also something we have been interacting with for a long amount of time in our life. So let's see what it looks like. Right? Nothing. Nothing. As you can look over here, right? It has a layered structure. It has a layer. It has a layer. Then it has another layer. Then it has another layer. Right? It's a layered structure. Okay? Held by Van der Waal forces. Right? So these dotted lines. You see those dotted lines? Right? These dotted lines. So what it's saying is that one layer and second layer is held by Van der Waal force. Right? So layers and layers and layers, they are held together by Van der Waal forces. Right? So the covalent bonding, I would say again, what does it mean? That the covalent bonding, a proper covalent bond, a proper covalent bond is only within the layer. A proper covalent bond is only within the layer. Between two layers, there is no covalent bond. Between two layers, there's no actual sharing of electrons. There's no actual covalent bond. There's no actual orbital overlap. It is just weak electrostatic forces, right? Between two layers, it is just weak electrostatic forces, which we also call as Van der Waal forces, right? So remember that, right? Between two layers, there is no covalent bond, there is no overlap of orbital, there is no sharing of electrons, only Van der Waal forces. And what you have in a layer is basically what? A 3D structure. How the structure looks like, the hexagon and all, we're coming to it. Wait, right? And distance between the two layers is 340. Don't remember it, but for the next two minutes, remember it because I'll come back to it. Yeah? In the long term, don't remember it. Now, each layer is composed of planar hexagonal links of sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. But sir, I see this carbon is forming only three bonds. How sp2? And where's the, where's the like sigma bond or sorry, where's the pi bond? That there has to be a pi bond, right? So the electrons are delocalized. The electrons are delocalized. I think delocalized must be, must be a very frequent term since you're studying organic. So that saves me, you know, some slack over here. So the bond is the delocalized ring. Let's read over about it. Each carbon atom in the hexagonal ring, each carbon atom in the hexagonal ring make three sigma bonds with three neighboring carbon atoms and the fourth electron forms a pi bond. Also, also the electrons are mobile and delocalized over the whole sheet, therefore, Graphite conducts electricity along the sheet. So that was too fast. I understand. Let's go back. Right? Let's go back. Let's read it. Each layer, planar hexagonal rings of each carbon sp2 hybridized. Remember, these are direct questions that can come. What is the hybridization of carbon and graphite? sp2. Where is the pi bond? Does it form a pi bond? Why is it... Uh, are the pi bonds... Or the, are the delocalized electrons responsible for conducting electricity? All these are direct points, so remember them. Each carbon in a hexagonal ring can make three sigma bonds with three neighboring carbon atoms. That part is sorted. Each carbon can form three sigma bonds with three neighboring carbon atoms. And the fourth electron forms a pi bond. And the fourth electron of carbon forms a pi bond with some other Fourth electron on some other carbon atom, right? So each carbon is bonded to three other carbon atoms, right? And it, with any one of them, it can form a pi bond, right? But as we have read in organic chemistry, right? Whenever there is a conjugation, right? There could be delocalization. So the electrons are mobile. For that very reason, the electrons are mobile. Yeah, the pi bond is not shown here. The electrons are mobile and delocalized over the whole layer. Or the whole layer, over the whole sheet, the electrons, because of the delocalization and the conjugation, are moving here and there. And for that very reason, graphite conducts electricity along the sheets. For that very reason, what did I say? For that very reason, graphite conducts electricity over the whole sheet. Isn't that interesting? Right? Okay. Now, graphite is also used as a dry lubricant. Why? In machines running at high temperature, what happens is that if you have oil, right, where oil cannot be used, if you have oil, first we'll come to why oil, why not oil and then we'll come to why graphite. So oil beyond 160, 150, 170, 180 degrees Celsius, this range, right, 
starts to get oxidized, right? It gets oxidized and so it cannot further act as a lubricant, right? The molecules inside start getting oxidized at relatively higher temperatures, right? Somewhere around 170 degrees Celsius. So what happens is graphite, on the contrary, because of its extensive 3D structure and extensive bonding, right, can withstand temperatures to a much higher degree as compared to a normal oil, normal lubricant oil or a lube, right? Why is it a good lubricant is because, is because, right, their layers, look, their layers have what? Van der Waal forces, right? Their layers have van der Waal forces and van der Waal forces are strong or weak? Come on, come on. Van der Waal forces are strong or weak? Weak. So van der Waal forces, the layers are held by van der Waal forces and the layer and the van der Waal forces are weak. So the layers can, you know, move around a bit. The layers can move around a bit. Now think of, you know, a, a, a speck of graphite, a tiny dot of graphite. What you see on, let's say a tiny dot, a tiny dot of graphite. Zoom it. Zoom it a million times. Zoom it a billion times. What do you see? You see these layers and layers and layers and layers. And those layers can swipe here and there. What does that tell you? Right? What does that tell you? That you know what? Graphite cleaves, cleaves, cleaves. Right? This cleaves. The, these Van der Waal forces got cleaved. No in between. In between these two layers, the Van der Waal forces got cleaved. So this cleaves very easily between the layers and it is very soft, soft and slippery. Slippery for that very reason, which is exactly what we want in a lubricant apart from the thermal stability. Apart from the thermal stability, right?